Hello there, welcome to another video log after a short break. I hope to be able to make these regularly right now. Anyway, I got a question from a viewer or a reader about why are some languages fast and other languages slow? For example, um, and this is an example which I got from the, uh, from the said reader, is, well, in Python, for example, if we have a loop which counts from zero to 100 million, then it takes several seconds, for example, two seconds or 10 seconds, depending on the speed of the computer. But in Java, that takes just two milliseconds. So that's basically a thousand times faster. So what's up with that and um, how to explain it? And this question is already really interesting because the result of two milliseconds to count from zero to 100 million is already a little shady. And to explain why I think it's a little shady, it's a correct result, by the way, but it's um, there's something going on there which isn't really related to counting itself. Let's assume that our computer is rather modern, right? And it has, um, well, it operates with four gigahertz. That means it is able theoretically to do four billion operations per second. So that would be four times 10 to the power of nine. Now, let's assume that each uh, iteration of a loop which counts from zero to 100 million takes uh, one cycle to add, well, increment the number and another cycle to compare whether the loop should quit. So that's um, already two cycles, right? So let's try to um, basically grab the, uh, the number which I just said, which is two cycles times 100 million. So uh, two, 10 to the power of two. Uh, sorry, uh, 10 to the power of uh, 6, obviously. And let's divide it by the number of cycles and, uh, and actually make this um, a floating point, so we get the fraction as well. And this is the theoretical speed of how fast should this counting loop execute. And the result we got, which we got is 0.5 seconds, which is 50 milliseconds. So this is already theoretically way slower than the speed where, uh, in which Java executes this. So what's up with that? I mean, why is Java faster than the theoretical speed in which this should be possible? Before we get to the explanation, um, I'm going to basically run benchmarks on a couple of applications, well, programs I created in four languages. That will be Python, which was mentioned by the reader, Java as well, assembly to see how fast this loop would be in assembly, and uh, C++. Let's start with Python. So I'm going just to use the normal Python CPython interpreter. And it takes uh, two seconds to execute this loop, two and a half second, and as we could see, one second to execute the loop if it actually uses X range instead. So yes, these are the results, these are in seconds. This is kind of as expected. And um, the reason this is so slow is that Python is actually a compiled language. Uh, you might think it's interpreted, but it's actually compiled. It's compiled into Python bytecode. And uh, well, we could actually just use, uh, I think, this to see. Yeah, this is the bytecode which is executed. Now, each operation in the bytecode needs to be um, and well, not really interpreted, but it needs to be um, decoded, then it needs to be executed. And to execute each instruction, multiple instructions in uh, machine code, in x86 machine code, are executed. So it means that even if we see one operation here, um, yeah, like whichever, like for, for example, load const, that actually, well, boils down to 100, 1000 or 10,000 operations done by the real computer. So yeah, even if we see just a simple loop here, it does boil down to multiple, well, hundreds or thousands of operations uh, per iteration on the CPU. And this is normal for languages which operate on a, a basically a virtual machine. Some languages and Python uh, is one of them might have a uh, JIT compiler implemented. A JIT compiler is, uh, well, just-in-time compilation, which means that we execute the, well, the script, right? It gets compiled into the bytecode, byte code, and then some pieces of that bytecode are being compiled again during runtime. 
to x86 machine code. Actually, Python, C Python doesn't have this by default, but there's uh, a JIT compiler called PyPy. So let's see, let's run the same program in PyPy and see what's the difference. And as you can see, the speeds are much closer to the ther theoretical speed, which I um, mentioned before. And these are, uh, well, this is pretty much uh, the fastest it will get for Python. Now let's uh, see the same application in Java, uh, sorry, in Java, in assembly. It's well, just this code. Basically, put zero in CX, compare it to 100 million, then increment it and jump to the beginning of, uh, of the loop. Well, actually here. And that's it. This is exactly what it does. Let's see how fast or how slow is this. I have this already compiled in the form of A out. And uh, the result is in, we are using a read timestamp, sorry, read timestamp counter. So the result will be in, um, Cycles. So we do have to convert this to seconds. And to do that, I will do, um, I will convert this number to decimal first. Well, actually, I didn't have to do it, but I do have to divide this number by the speed of my CPU clock. I think it's uh, 2.3.2 um, uh, gigahertz, so that will be need, needs to be multiplied by 10 to the power of 9. And this is the result, which is again pretty much the same as we got in case of a Python um, JIT compiler, right? Uh, it might be, seem a little slower, but if I would rerun this a couple of times, it might actually get better times because, well, benchmarking is hard. But for the sake of the discussion, we don't need exact results. So, uh, yes, why does Java get 002 if assembly go, gets only 58 milliseconds? This is still a question, right? Let's see C++ um, before we get to Java. Uh, or actually, let's do Java first. So I'm going to run Java count, and this is the result. The result is, uh, let me just take a look at the code, is in nanoseconds, which means we do have to divide this by um, 10 to the power of uh, nine, if I count correctly. If I don't count correctly, I will correct myself in a second. Now, this is fine. So this is basically one and a half milliseconds. So this is way faster than an assembly. From when is Java faster than assembly? We will solve this riddle in a second. Let's just check uh, C++ first. So in C++, actually, I also use the timestamp counter, which is the cycle counter of a CPU. And yeah, so let's see. Um, first, I'm going to run it with, um, well, I already have it compiled, by the way. I have it compiled with, um, some minor optimizations, and in this case, we get these many cycles. Let's do another check. I'm just going to copy paste this part. This is uh, pretty close to the theoretical speed, which is to be expected. I also have another version which is compiled with maximum optimizations, which GCC is able to do, and we get 24 cycles. 24 cycles is, well, we can do the math, right? But this is like crazy fast. And uh, yeah, it's, yeah, uh, there are a lot of zeros here, like eight zeros, then a two, which means this is the fastest solution. How could it count so fast if the theoretical speed is 0 0.05, right? Let's solve the C++ riddle first because I guess it will it will explain it best and I, to, to do that I'm actually going to use Godbolt which is a, a website where you can put code and you will get assembly code on the right and I am compiling with dash o1 which is normal optimization and we basically get a really similar code to the one I've written by hand in assembly however if we switch to O3, as you can see, we basically don't have the loop anymore. There is no addition. Why is that? This is uh, due to, well, basically the as if rule and some other rules in C++, the standard basically allows the compiler to remodel the code, change the code any way the compiler wants to, uh, if and only if the effects are basically the same. And what are the effects of this loop? There are no effects of this loop. The I is never used. This, as you can see, this line is commented out. Inside the body of this for, there is um, nothing. So the compiler says, yeah, this is dead code. It doesn't do anything. 
the compiler just like removes it. And um, yeah, this is a, a pretty much a correct thing to do in C++. And as you can see, this yields a really fast code. But what if we would actually want to use I instead? So I'm going to, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, uncomment this and I want to print it. And we can already see that the compiler still didn't include the loop. Instead, on compilation time, it calculated that at the end of the loop, I will have this value the 100 million which I mentioned and is going to pass this value to printf later on. So um, yeah, the C++ is, uh, this is one of the strengths of, of the language basically, but it can modify the code to make it as fast as possible. So even if we write really slow code, some of it might be executed in compilation time and the, um, instead of calculating the values at runtime, we will just get constants or parts of the code will be removed. This is uh, um, really why I like C++, because of the things the compiler to, can, can do to generate good code. And um, actually, uh, Java can do pretty much the same thing. To explore this, I am going to use a tool which is called JitWatch. And thank you to Voxtrot Charlie for actually recommending me this tool. This is um, this tool basically allows you to see what did the just-in-time compiler in Java optimize during the execution. And to look at our code, I'm going to look at, well, let's first, I guess, look at the timeline. This is the timeline. So the loop was, well, the program was, uh, started and then it started to calculate the value somewhere here and it calculated uh, through s for some time and then it scheduled compilation of the part of the code which uh, hotspot decided needs to be well it's a hotspot basically it needs to be optimized and this is where the optimi optimization of the compilation the just-in-time compilation finished and uh, started to be used then another round was being uh, run on it to optimize it and as you can see the program basically ends here which means that after it, it was compiled, the compilation finished only, it took only a matter of, well, not even milliseconds. This is like parts of milliseconds to wrap it up. So what did the compiler do? And I'm going to look specifically on this um, compilation output. To do that, I need to, uh, well, I just, I'm just going to click on this. Uh, sorry, yep, trivia. Here we go. Perfect. Level four. Okay. So on the left, you can see our program, including the loop. On the right, well, on the middle, actually, this is Java bytecode, because Java as Python is compiled into a bytecode. And this is a normal loop. Well, mm, this is 100 million, there's the comparison, this is the increment, and this is a jump to the beginning of the loop. It's basically the same code as we saw in assembly, but in Java bytecode, right? Now on the right, you can, we can see what did the compiler do with it. And this is after the second optimization, right? So um, yeah, if we look at it, it starts to be a little funny because we get here as in uh, load the value, which is in um, the third register and put it on, well, third variable actually, and put it on the stack and then compare it to this value. This is the 100 million value. If it's greater then jump here, and we, we jump here, uh, so this is basically exiting the loop. But if it is not greater, what we would expect is incrementing the value and jumping to the beginning of the loop. Instead, what is happening is the value 100 million is being assigned to the variable, uh, to well, in this case, the variable is assumed to be in this register, and the loop exits as well. So yeah, it basically does the same kind of optimization as C++ compiler would do. Well, in Java, I think this is a little more, um, I don't think the standard allows to do this, but the JIT compiler can say, yeah, this is safe to, to do it. And if no other types or nothing changes appear, uh, no changes appear, then uh, yeah, it's good to execute this code because it will have uh, the same effect as just running the code would have. So yeah, this, this is basically the trick in Java. It would, uh, run for a while, then decide it needs to optimize this loop and decide that, hey, this loop actually doesn't do anything. It just at the end of its execution puts 100 million in the variable and it will do exactly that, exactly what the loop would do 
um, what the effect of the loop would be. So this is the, I guess, solution to our riddle to why was why is Java, why is C++ so fast? It's because it doesn't actually do the calculations in the end because it knows that in our program, these calculations don't have to be done. Um, if we have a really long code, it's really beneficial to have a compiler which can do these kind of tricks and uh, we can rely on the compiler or the execution environment to do these optimizations for us because it makes the code more readable if we can just express what we want to happen and then the results are still being the real results we want. So that's about it. Um, thank you and see you next time.